after the Axis attack on the Kingdom of Yugoslavia on April the 6, 1941, the Slovene territory with around 1,200,000 inhabitants was divided. The largest part was assigned to the German occupation authorities. Italy acquired the southern part and eastern part was handed over to Hungary. Five settlements were annexed to the independent state of Croatia. The occupiers wanted to destroy the cultural and national identity of the Slovene nation. The German occupation authorities expelled 63,000 Slovenes to Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Germany, Germanized the population and settled German families. The occupation authorities introduced forced mobilization into the German and Hungarian armies. The Hungarian occupation administrations banned the public use of Slovene language, expelled Slovene intellectuals and interned post-World War I Slovene colonists. In the Italian province of Ljubljana, a longer period was planned for Italianization. An autonomous position was promised with an advisory council as a consultative body and bilingualism. The resistance, initiated by various groups and by a variety of means, started already in the first weeks of the occupation. On April 26, 1941, the representatives of the Communist, Christian Socialist, Sokol and Cultural Workers formed the Liberation Front. They advocated armed resistance as a starting point for the liberation and unification of all Slovenes and the post-war takeover of power. The Communists in particular sought revolutionary change according to the Soviet-style social order. In the summer of 1941, the first partisan units were formed and became part of a broader Yugoslav resistance movement. Numbers of workshops, hospitals and other institutions were established to support them. The partisan units were established throughout the entire Slovene territory. Members of this were also forcibly mobilized Slovene deserters from various occupying armies, individuals and units of other nationalities, including several Italian brigades and an Austrian battalion. Many Slovenes also participated in resistance movements across Yugoslavia and Europe. The differing pre-war leading parties tended to act tactically and awaited instructions from the government in exile in London. In 1942, anti-revolutionary and anti-communist camp united in Slovene alliance, which also advocated a federalist and democratically regulated state and the unification of all Slovenes. The camp recognized the main enemy to be communism and in fighting this, they became involved in various forms of collaboration. Ideological conflicts, partisan violence and the occupiers' countermeasures in the Ljubljana province triggered the formation of village guards, later armed and supported by the Italian authorities as an anti-communist militia. The Yugoslav army in the homeland, uh, the Chetniks, was also formed. Active conflict between the two camps took place with elements of civil war with an intense propaganda. Slovenes living outside the borders of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia also experienced the Nazi and fascist oppression. Among the first victims of German violence on the Slovene territory were the disabled and those with special needs staying at the hospitals and care homes. They were euthanized in Hartheim in Austria in summer 1941. In order to suppress the armed resistance movement, the occupiers directed aggression towards the partisan units and escalated violence against the civilian population. 
about 80,000 Slovenes were imprisoned, almost 60,000 were deported to concentration camps, and more than 3,000 hostages were shot. Most of the Jewish population were deported to Auschwitz concentration camp. Many members of the Roma community lost their lives during the war. In Gorenska, a satellite camp of concentration camp Mauthausen was built, and near Trieste, concentration camp Rijarna San Saba was established. After the capitulation of Italy in September 1943, in Slovene occupied territory was included in the German operation zone of the Adriatic littoral. This also comprised a Slovene territory that had been part of the Kingdom of Italy since 1920. The anti-communist units were defeated in September 1943, and with the help of the German occupier, the Slovene Home Guard was established in Ljubljana in the same month. German police used them as collaborating auxiliary police force for fighting against partisan groups and for the maintenance of law and order of Slovene territory of former Ljubljana province. Anti-communist camp established the National Committee in November 1944. The last unrealistic attempt was the proclamation of the national state of Slovenia within the Federal Kingdom of Yugoslavia on May 3, 1945. At Tehran Conference in November 1943, the partisan movement was recognized as part of the anti-fascist coalition. The Allies supported partisans and took part in joint attacks. Over 800 Allied prisoners of war and airmen were rescued in Slovenia. In the liberated territories, Liberation Front committees held elections. Slovene women were able to vote for the first time. At the assembly in October 1943, the National Liberation Committee was elected, later proclaimed as Slovene National Liberation Committee, it was the highest body of Slovene statehood. At the second session of the Anti-Fascist Council of the National Liberation of Yugoslavia, a provisional government of Yugoslavia headed by Josip Broz Tito, was appointed. For Slovenes, the most important decision was to confirm the annexation of the Slovene littoral to free Slovenia within federal Yugoslavia. The national government of Slovenia was proclaimed in Aydovština on May 5, 1945. In the spring of 1945, the Allies launched coordinated military operations to end the war as soon as possible. After four years of fighting, the partisan army took control of the Slovene territory. Final military operations took place in Carinthia after the official end of war. Second World War had claimed almost 100,000 casualties among Slovenes. Many returned home right up to the middle of the 1950s. The Slovene Home Guard units and some civilians who had withdrawn to Austria just before the end were handed over to partisan units at the end of May 1945. Most of them were killed without trial. The civilians who remained in the refugee camps in Austria and Italy were granted the status of displaced persons and later emigrated mostly to Argentina, Canada, Australia and the United States. After the Second World War, the Communist Party ensured a political monopoly. Actual and potential political and class opponents were subjected to police control and prosecution. In many stage political trials, they were accused of collaborating with occupier, political immigration, hostile propaganda, collaboration with foreign intelligence service, while opponents with the party were removed within the party were removed at the time of the Inforum Bureau. The political opposition was unable to obtain greater political power. 
in the period of centralization of power, strict control and persecution took place at least until the beginning of the 50s.